I've gotten the switch over from night to day to less than a second. Watch this. Day? Night. Day? Night. Welcome to Sweller Than Dweller. If you're looking to do a budget build for van life, it doesn't matter if you have the newest of the new vans, like a Transit, Sprinter, Promaster, or one of the old standbys, like an Econoline, Savannah, Express, or something else. By the end of this video, you'll have some ideas and inspiration for things that you can do for even a no-build van conversion. My simple and frugal van conversion started with a 2011 Ford Econoline E150 that was five years old when I bought it. It was in great shape because it was previously owned by a food caterer who did no modifications to it, so it only smelled like fantastic food. So let's take a closer look. For the flooring, I bought a sheet of 3 8 inch plywood for the subfloor. I topped that with a vinyl click together laminate. I easily found a box online that was left over from a house renovation for only $20. I only needed one box of laminate because I figured it would be a waste to finish anything other than the front living space. Below the bed and in the rear where I store my bike, I've left the bare metal of the van. Because I can't stand up in the van, I actually don't wear shoes inside. And I keep the floor clean and tend to sit and stretch out on the floor with cushions and pillows. And this floor is completely free floating. I've not attached it to the base of the van. And the reason for that is because this floor needs room to expand and contract. And if you were to secure it to the bottom, you could get buckling and separation when the floor goes through the seasons here in Canada, where it varies between minus 30 and plus 30. During my Alaska trip, I drove on some pretty rough roads, the McCarthy Road and the Dempster. And I found even with the floor floating, it never really moved because it's quite heavy and solid as assembled. All I noticed was that on the roughest roads, after 100 kilometers of driving, it had maybe shifted about half an inch. So I found a fairly simple solution. What I did was I took one minute and I pushed it back into place. I purchased two 8 inch Luan mahogany plywood sheets and attach them to the walls with self-tapping screws. I cut them nicely to fit the contours of the van walls and added hooks along the top for coats and other clothes. For insulation, I didn't use any. I know some people find this shocking, but I'm not using it in winter or sitting in it in extreme heat all day. I have warm bedding and sleeping clothes, and since most heat is lost through the head, I wear a toque on very cold nights. On very cool mornings, I find that when I turn on the stove to heat up a hot drink or cook breakfast, it also heats up the van very quickly. Stoves put out a lot of heat. You might as well make it do double duty. As far as dealing with hot days, I open the rear doors and I have a mosquito net with magnets glued to it that I attach across the back opening. I also have a small battery operated fan that I hang from the ceiling right next to where I'm sleeping. My bed is wall to wall. To make it, I use two sheets of 5 8 inch plywood. For storage, I have five 50 liter rubber bins beneath the bed. The lip of the front flooring keeps the bins in place, but I also use a ratchet strap across the front of them when moving for extra safety. As you can see, it's not foldable. It's a permanent bed, which gives me a huge amount of storage space underneath. A unique thing about this bed is it's not actually bolted to the van in any way. It's free floating. Now, that might sound a little bit dubious, but it is secure. It locks into place in two ways. First, when the sleeping platform is on, you can see that it's cut to the contours of the van and it fits into nooks of the van wall that secure it from moving forward. So even if I ever had to hard brake, it would be physically impossible for the bed to move forward. It just won't fit. Second, I used rubber stairway mats to cut and fashion 
shims of the right size to push up against both the wheel wells and the side of the bed to take up all the excess space and lock it securely into place. I assure you this holds very well. The other advantage of the rubber stairway mat as shims is that it eliminates any squeaking and creaking of the bed while driving, which can be annoying if you have that problem. I've also cut four feet for each corner of the bed that floats it off the floor and eliminates any creaking that way. Now if you're observant, you'll notice that the middle brace is not actually in the middle of the bed. Well, why is that? And how did I decide where to put it? Well, I figured that most of the weight when I'm sleeping is going to be at my hip level. So when I laid down, that is where I wanted the brace to be. Now, I also had a little bit of range in that area. The position of this middle brace also allows me to accommodate two storage totes on one side and a third storage tote on the other side. Originally, I made these middle braces to be removable, and the back one still is. Here it is right here, and you can see it just slots in here. I can move it in and out as I want, and I just did that in case I had some larger items at some point that I needed, you know, a, a bigger space to uh, to load them. But now I've made this front brace permanent because I'm turning this section, instead of using a rubber tote, into one that will use sliding drawers. Now with the sleep platform on, you can see how my storage works. I've got the water jug in the corner and my new brace that comes right to the front is allowing for my sliding uh, drawer on rails and then I have another just pull out, uh, pull out drawer there. It's also from Ikea and only costs $10. And look at how organized it keeps everything and how much stuff it holds. Tremendous. As well as on this side, my two remaining storage totes. Okay, so with the mattress in, you can see that, well, we're looking pretty good. If I sit up straight, there's enough clearance here that I'm not in danger of bumping my head. I couldn't skimp on the mattress because I need to sleep well. So I got a custom made full twin size foam mattress. It's got a layer of two inch firm 2036 foam topped with another layer of 1.5 inch 0.5 inch waffle 2026 foam. For storing my bike, I made a garage in the rear of the van that takes a mere 11 and a half inches of depth. I'm able to load and unload the bike with no disassembly. I merely have to loosen the handlebars and turn them sideways. Also accessible from the rear is more storage underneath the bed. Now let's look at the kitchen. For water storage, I have a 25 liter or 7 gallon container to contain all of my fresh water. I positioned it so the spout is over the doorway entry so any drips just go outside of the van. For food cooling, I got a cheap 5 day cooler on sale. Even though it's inexpensive, it still holds ice very well and I tend to only have to get ice every three to five days and I'm at the grocery store anyways. People often scoff at ice coolers because the ice melts and then their meat and vegetables fall into the water, creating an unhealthy mess. The basic idea to solve this is to create a tray that fits inside of your cooler. As the ice melts and creates a pool of water, the tray remains suspended up high, holding any food that shouldn't be submerging in the water safely above. I also bought a two burner portable white gas stove online for $50. To help with cooking outside, I got a lawn chair and a plastic table. And as mentioned, I tend to sit on the floor in the van. So when the weather isn't nice, I can also cook with the stove on the floor while a window or the door is cracked. For lighting, I bought a $4 LED lantern from my local dollar store. It has a triangle of three panels of LEDs that provide light in every direction. Although I started with it like this, I eventually took it apart and separated the three panels and added long lengths of wires allowing me to mount the panels separately along the roof, 
while mounting the base of the lantern above my bed with the switch. For window coverings, I actually use bamboo beach mats that have a silver backing. I've cut them to size and I attach them with the flexible clips meant for the back of picture frames. The clips nestle under the screws that attach the window to the frame. For privacy, separating the cockpit from the rear, I found a set of drapes for $10 from the discount bin of my local fabric store. I got a spring-loaded curtain rod to spread these drapes across the back of the seats. These were extremely important in Alaska where you have 24-hour light. And through practice and optimization, I've gotten the switch over from night to day to less than a second. Watch this. Day? Night. Day? Night. If you're all wet because it's been raining or snowing, you don't want to track all that into your van. So it's best that you have a place to hang all that wet stuff right by your entrance. This coat rack is right above my door opening. The beauty of it is that I can open my doors and then hang my items without even taking them into the van. And because it's right over the doorway, all the water drips down into the waterproof door well and flows outside of the van, not getting my beautiful vinyl plank flooring wet. In your van, you've got all these frustrating small loose items like toothpaste, toothbrush, sunscreen, hand cream, eye cream, wrinkle cream, toilet pa paper. For all the small items you have, get a backseat organizer like this. Now I've seen them for hundreds of dollars from van specialty shops, but I got this one from AliExpress.com for under $15 Canadian. A cargo net. These also can be very expensive, but I got this one from my dollar store for under $5. Inside of it you can store all kinds of things. I use it to store my clothes. I put everything in these plastic bags to keep everything organized. So for example, I have one bag for shirts, another for socks and underwear, and another for pants, and another for miscellaneous. And where did I get these bags? Well, if you've ever bought a sheet set, they often come in a bag like this. And because I'm a crazy lunatic, I save the bags even without any idea what I'd use them for. But they have this zipper on them, and it seems like a real shame to throw them away. So I dug them out and here they are and they're perfect. But I also know that if you look at stores like Ikea, they should have some sort of plastic or fabric bags that will work for you if you're not yet a crazy lunatic like me and already have some of these in your personal inventory. Now you may find the cargo net is a bit floppy, especially if you load it with heavy things. But you know, I found I already had these coat hooks that I installed all along the side of my van. And now I can simply hook the net onto these and it gives it a lot of extra support and works great. It's like magic. If the cargo net doesn't work for you, here's another idea. What we have here is some hanging storage from Ikea. It's ultra light compared to wood cabinets, which I love because I'm ultra fuel conscious right now. And this top drawer, I've loaded it up with some socks and t-shirts. And you can see, it's just, it's just beautiful. My friends came over the other night and sat in my chair and broke it. And look, I was gonna throw it away, but look, it's got these big, beautiful metal rods that should be just about the right size for my new closet. <sighs> Destruction. Awesome. Well, perhaps I'm not so upset with my friend breaking my lawn chair. Oh.
Awesome. Now that is recycling. Let's go see how it fits. Oh, look at that. Look at he split. I think that's going to work just fine. As far as keeping clean, I tend to swim a lot in lakes and rivers. If I'm in a remote location and I don't have any water source nearby, I bought a $5 garden watering can that allows me to shower outside. I simply pour the water over my head. The can has a surprisingly excellent shower head. This is a common garden sprayer that can be purchased for around $20 from any hardware store or garden center. And with only a little bit of time and a simple modification, you can turn it into an incredible van life shower. Clean as a whistle. For my bathroom, if I have to go in the night, I have a pee bottle. Now ladies might find this rather unusable, but you just add a shiwi and then it becomes much easier. For power charging, I only have a phone, netbook, camera, and watch. And I'm not stationary for more than two nights, so I find that I can keep all charged while driving using a $20 second-hand inverter that I found online. It simply plugs into the accessory slot of the dashboard. So I know this is pretty sparse for some people, but you know what? It really works for me. I've been using it for the past six years, all the way from the deserts in the south to the Yukon and Alaska up in the far north. This exact design probably won't work for anyone else. I mean, there's as many van designs as there are people on the face of the earth. But none is wrong or right or better than the other. The best design is simply the one that works for you. However, I hope with this design, I've at least inspired you and maybe even got your creative juices flowing for your own build. If you appreciate my efforts to make these videos and don't think I'm some sort of crazy lunatic, I would be humbled if you would subscribe to my channel because it's the only way you can support me and let me know that you want me to continue making more. So until next time, keep your life simple and enjoy your van. Bye for now.